Hello, this is that one guy. I have come up with a three-man shuttle now. Uh, that is two more than my original Garami could hold, so what we're going to do is I'm going to give a little tutorial on how to fly it. This is about my third flight that I've ever done with these. Um, I still have yet to figure out the exact periapsis that I need to achieve in order to land on the runway, but uh, let's go with pre-flight procedures. As soon as your stage light begins to flash green, you can hit T to initiate your computers. Go ahead and throttle all the way up, it's not going to matter for a bit, and then hit G to retract your landing gear. You're also going to want to go ahead and hit caps lock to turn on your precision controls. So three, two, one, lift off. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hold down S a lot, because as you see I had some forward pitch. I'm not entirely sure what causes that, but uh, it's not so bad that you can't compensate for it by just holding down S and pulling back on your uh, altimeter gauge thing. Shut up, I know my controls. Anyways, this burns out uh, right about 4,000 odd meters. Jackpot. Go ahead and light your next stage. Now, while you're losing uh, velocity, you're going to want to rotate your ship so that the belly faces a 90 degree heading. Now, this isn't the smoothest roll in the world, as I'm still trying to learn how to fly this thing uh, while I'm putting out a tutorial on it. So the next thing you're going to want to do is, because you're already past that 5,000 meter mark, you're going to want to roll down to a degree of uh, 60 degrees above the horizon at a 90 degree heading. Once you're there, go ahead and reset your computer by hitting F. Your flight computer, I should say. You're going to be good for a little while, but you're going to want to roll back on your velocity a little bit. This shuttle uh, is powered by these two uh, liquid rockets. And the first area that it pulls fuel from is this center area right here. Uh, so as soon as that depletes, all you really have firing is these uh, rockets on either side. Now that tends to cause a lot of forward pitch, which I could correct with uh, trim, but I'm not sure if I have enough trim to correct it. So now I'm going to go over to the map view, or the orbital map view, or whatever the kids are calling it these days. So, as we see, we are increasing our both velocity and altitude. And uh, I'm trying to keep the um, acceleration at about a G. Anything over that, and I start having uh, viciously aggressive flight problems. So when I have 35,000 meters, I'm going to go ahead and drop it to 45 degrees above the horizon on a 90 degree heading. Now, as you see, I've missed it. And... Uh, it's taking a little while to pull back up. So that is why uh, we might want to just back off on the throttle a bit. And uh, don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Okay. We're going to back off the throttle just a little bit more. Ah! Alright. Now, I can still probably pull a pretty successful test flight out of this, but uh, in order to achieve the best results... <clears throat> come on, get up! Okay, looks like we're just going to be at 40. Uh, we're a little bit under a G right now, so we're going to go ahead and pick that back up. Okay, good. Uh, the added power is helping me uh, maintain a better flight now. However, um, that was not optimal. So, like I said, it's only the third time I've ever flown these things, so I honestly don't have all the glitches ironed out. That's why I'm A, posting it to the community for, I guess, review and uh, debug, but I'm also doing some of that myself. And uh, you guys get to be the ones that I talk to death uh, about how I do that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to stay on this, uh, I guess, both fuel consumption rate and uh, heading until uh, my apoapsis reaches roughly 70,000 meters, which uh, that's 
going to happen here in a little bit. So because I'm not quite at a G yet, and there we are, I'm at a G. There we go. Yeah, I thought I was going to have some issues, but once I hit 70,000, I'm going to go ahead and drop my uh, throttle a little bit so that I can maneuver a bit better, and then I'm going to roll us down to a 10 degree above the horizon uh, heading along 90 degree heading. So here we are. I'm going to drop my throttle just a little bit right now, and then I'm going to go ahead and just let us naturally coast down, which is what got me into trouble last time. But this time, I compensated for it early enough that it didn't really affect our flight plan. So now I'm going to bring us back up to a G. That's a little over a G. So as you see, I had to quick bring it back down. Now the next hold point is 100,000 meters, because I found that's a really good kickoff point for any orbit. That includes transmunar injection, transminmus injection, and hopefully when we get more planets, trans whatever the name is injection. So the nice thing about this ship is uh, it's going to get us up to roughly orbital speed uh, by the time we hit 100,000 meters. So what I'm going to do is once we get to the apoapsis of what I need, two, one, right there, close enough. I'm going to go ahead and pause this recording software and I'll bring you back in when we're a little closer. Alright, we're pretty close to our apoapsis. We're about 27 seconds away from it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line us up and I'm going to start a nice slow burn. Now right now we're only about mm, 130 odd meters per second away from an actual orbit. So we're going to go ahead and bring our acceleration up to around a G, which uh, this ship is really acceleration sensitive. Anything over a G and it will start malfunctioning, so that's a disclaimer. I'm slapping on it right now. All right, we have an orbit that we're not going to come out of unless we uh, actively burn away. So we're getting to my orbit, so I'm going to slow us down a little bit, not because I need to, but because I want to have better control over when I reach 300,000 meters, which is my test altitude for all of my spacecraft. There we go. Close enough. Now, in order to avoid a problem that I had last time I was trying to record this tutorial, I'm going to roll our ship right now over to bearing 270 so that I don't accidentally bring us out of orbit when I'm trying to put us into a better orbit. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get into an orbit, and then uh, I'll walk you through some of the features. Okay, I'll see you when that happens. All right, we're back, and uh, I have entered into a roughly circular orbit, so I guess I can run you through how this whole thing works. We have one RCS tank up here with uh, just the standard thrusters on it. The two rockets that power this are initially fed from here, with these two fuel lines, which means uh, this drains very, very rapidly. Um, let's see, as you see, maybe, it's based loosely on the Garami design, because um, that has been my only shuttle to work. However, uh, this has three times the capacity, and as you see, in orbit you have clearly enough to get down. You have 250.6 liters in this tank, and uh, roughly 200 liters in this tank, and uh, you'll see that um, on both sides uh, that is true. We've actually drained very little of this fuel, only about a thousand liters on each tank, or on each rocket, uh, to get up here. Which, um, with a ship this size, that's not bad. So, let's go ahead and take the little virtual tour, shall we? We're going to go ahead and turn on this, back away from the ship. All right, let's uh, let's start at the back. Okay, as you see on the underside, back here, there is a uh, series of struts here that connects the uh, landing gear because I've had issues with landing gear coming off uh, on non-traditional landings. Uh, these are all the uh, Mark III fuselage parts, except for the rockets over here, and as you can see, you can see where the uh, SRBs were mounted onto here with both 
um, standard radial decouplers and uh, struts. Up front right here we have the uh, advanced canard uh, for more stability. Down back over in here we have a tail fin and uh, two little liquids over uh, little liquid rocket engines over here. So now uh, we're gonna go ahead and get back aboard the shuttle because uh, I want to roughly show you how to land with this thing in this video. We will see how that turns out. Oh, there we go. Grab. Go ahead and board. Alright, I'll see you... I will tell you how to land this thing because I... landing takes 12 minutes about and I don't have that much time. In order to land, you're going to want to do a... holy crap. Let's go ahead and speed that up so I can show you where you need to be. In order to land, you're going to want to start your burn uh, right here. That will put your periapsis somewhere out in this hi there, somewhere out in this ocean. Now I found 11,200 meters, which is the standard Garami landing uh, periapsis, is too much. So I'm gonna guess about 9,000 might do it. Just remember each. The closer you get to the planet, the more you slow down before you hit the runway. So, with your periapsis, anyways. So, I honestly don't know. This glides a heck of a lot better than the uh, Garami. But this has been that one guy uh, signing off.